Hello, my shabby loving friends. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around because we're going to make some stuff together. I am going to be shabbying up some thrift store items that I'm sure you could probably find in your local store as well. Contestant number one, who hasn't seen these beautiful brass candlesticks? They're gorgeous, I love them, but sometimes just having one single candlestick, meh, doesn't really add too much on a wall, but we're gonna do something really cute with that. Contestant number two, plantation shutter. Love these guys. You can pretty much find those uh, pretty frequently at your stores. Contestant number three. This was covered in some kind of crazy fabric and I ripped the fabric off so we're going to be giving a nice shabby makeover to this lampshade. It's not much of a shade right now but it will be when we get some cute fabric on there. And contestant number four an old beat up cabinet door. So stick around if you want to see how we're going to shabby these items up today. For our first DIY, I'm going to be making over the brass candlestick. Now I asked my hubby to build me a frame out of some scrap wood. And so what he did to the back of the frame is he mounted four separate pieces. So that way it's going to give me this nice, beautiful frame here that's going to resemble shiplap. I will be mounting the brass candlestick to that. It's just gonna be so pretty and just really give it some oomph on the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by painting this and I will be using the bare chalk paint. This is just plain old white and I love it. It gives pretty good coverage and I will probably need about two or three coats on this bare wood. I like to start on the outside. You can see there's glob of paint right here. When I do the outside edges, once I come back over the top of that, that's going to smooth all of that up. Where the paint has kind of settled into those areas there, I want to maintain that gap. So I'm just going to take a toothpick and run it through there to remove that excess paint. Then go back in with my brush and smooth it out. Set this aside and let this dry and we'll move on to our next project. Our cabinet door is going to be turned into a chalkboard. And this thing is so shiny. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to take some fine grit sandpaper and this is 320 grit, and I'm gonna take this outside to do it, but I'm going to sand this, just knock off some of that shine so that our paint will adhere well. I'm going to be painting the outside here white as like a little frame there, and then the inside, of course, will be our chalkboard. I will be using the Valspar chalkboard paint. You could also use the spray, I also suggest using a foam brush because it eliminates a lot of those brush strokes that you would get just using a traditional brush. Okay, sanded down and wiped off. It separates after it sits for a while. So what you want to do is make sure that you thoroughly stir that up. So we're going to just start applying our coats and let them thoroughly dry between coats. And then you wanna start and just run that down. Just making sure you have nice, smooth, even strokes. And now that I have that surface evenly coated, I'm just gonna go back over very, very lightly, eliminating any high points. And then we'll set this aside and let that dry and move on to one of our other projects. For our shutter, we're gonna be making this cute little wreath and adding it to the shutter. 
That's all we're going to do with that. This is going to be the cutest little easiest thing you've ever done to upcycle a shutter. Now you're going to need a wreath size that depends on the width of your shutter. I am going to show you how I made this using a larger wreath so it would be a little easier for you to see. So what I started with was one of these garlands from Hobby Lobby. For this size wreath, I used a 10 inch section of the garland. So that gives us this nice little section here. Move this out of the way. Then since this is 10 inches, I'm going to take a 20 inch section of my floral wire. And we're just gonna start wrapping that around. just going to take this end section here and start wrapping. I'm just going to secure that end and then all you do is just loop it around. Pull it tightly. Wrap it around. Bring it up again spread out another section so you can see right here this section here take your wire loop it around take it back behind there then I'm gonna wrap this last, last section right here down that's what we have so far on our wreath this is just a cute little cotton stem that I picked up from Walmart took my clippers and just clipped off one of these pieces. I did leave a little section there on the end so I could work with that. And then I just put it on there and I used my glue gun and I hot glued it. You can see that is how I did that. And it's so cute and so quick and so easy. So now we're going to attach our wreath to our shutter. I'm going to be using some ribbon. I have this package of upholstery nails and that's what they look like. They're really cute. And I also have a D-ring that I'll be attaching to the back so this can actually be hung up. So I did go ahead and pre-drill just so it wouldn't be so difficult to screw that in there. I'm going to take my wreath decide where I want it. I think that looks good, that distance there. Take some ribbon to pull through there and bring it to the back. And it looks super duper cute already. Turn it over and clip your ribbon. through there and there's one of my holes there. Put that in. Move my wreath out of the way so I don't squish it and take a hammer and just lightly nail that in. Looks good. So I'll take carefully the point of my scissors and make a hole in my ribbon so I can insert the screw. There we go. And that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now it's on to our lampshade. This is the lamp that I am going to be putting the lampshade on. It's just going to be so pretty. But what I'm going to do is take fabric strips because if you've watched any of my videos you know I love to snip and rip fabric. This is 100% white cotton muslin so my strips again are going to be 33 inches long and I'm going to rip them into one inch wide strips and let me show you how I do that. I've got my cutting mat underneath here with all the measurements there so it just makes it really really easy. I'm not sure how many strips I'm going to need but I'm just going to cut probably half a yard of this and we'll just see if that's enough. And if it's not, then I'll come back and add some more. So I'm just going to make little slits at one inch marks here. Okay, 
And then from there, we just rip it. And that is all there is to it. And now that we have our strips, they also will have plenty of string. So I'm just going to take these pieces, remove all the excess string, and then we'll start tying them onto our shade. Now what I did to determine how long I needed to cut my strips, I just took my tape measure, draped it through, and then decided how long I wanted that to hang down. So now we're going to take our strips, place them through the top, even them out at the bottom, and tie them on. I saw this on Pinterest several years ago. I always wanted to do it, just never did it. So when I started my YouTube channel, it was just a good excuse to be able to just go through my Pinterest board and start doing stuff. So far, so cute. Look at that. So I'm going to go off camera and finish tying the rest of these strips on so you don't have to be bored to death watching all of this. Anything that I do as far as the finishing touches, of course, I'll come back on camera and show you how to do that too. The last thing I'm going to do today is take my white paint and paint all around the outside here as the frame. And it's probably going to take three coats on that. So I'll get started so you can see what it's going to start looking like. And then we'll just finish up with the rest of our um, projects tomorrow. Now that I have the backer for the brass candlestick painted, now we're going to adhere our candlestick to the backer. And I will be using E6000 and hot glue around the edges. And what I did is I took my longest candlestick here to see where I needed to place my candlestick on my backer board. And the candlestick is just for decorative purposes only. Please don't light this. We do not want to um, have to call Smokey the Bear because we've started a fire in our home. Measure it up. And I'm applying it to the rim more toward the center of the candlestick instead of the outside edge. So that way when I press it down, I have less chance of glue running out from underneath there. Okay, so now that the E6000 is on, I will go put some hot glue on there. <sighs> and my dog, she's entertaining me. I don't know, she's just doing something silly in the floor over here. So if you hear her, I apologize. She just likes being in the craft room with mama. I'm gonna press down on there pretty hard. Looks good. So let me set this aside and we'll get another project going. Now that I've finished tying on the white muslin pieces, I want to cover up the frame here. I didn't want to spray paint that. I really don't like working with spray paint. So I've cut these beautiful pieces of blue checked fabric and I'm just going in and filling in between each of these with these blue pieces. That blue checked fabric is just so cute. I just love it and it is oh so shabby chic. I cut these 10 inches long and about four of these will fit between each of the white pieces that I have here. Just take it, tie it on and double tie it so it stays in place. And that's all there is to it. Then I'm gonna go back and give these pieces here a little haircut. But isn't that just adorable? Oh my goodness, I love it. Well, our chalkboard turned out great. I'm just glad I was only painting a cabinet door and not a hutch. It took four coats of white paint to cover that ebony wood. So the chalkboard paint itself though for the middle only took two coats. 
Now, of course, we're going to need something to put our chalk in. And I had a bunch of different tea tins. Um, if you're like me, you probably have a hard time throwing things away because you know you could use them in some kind of craft. So I do resist the urge to save every single jar, bottle, etc. But I do have these little tea tins and I thought that this one is going to be the perfect size to mount over here to store our chalk in. What I'm going to do is take some fine grit sandpaper. I will sand off, not sand off all the words, but I'm just going to get the shine off of it so the paint will stick a little better. Then I'll take the color called silver lining and that is going to be the base coat. I'll also be adding some darker gray later because what I'm going for is this galvanized look when I paint the little tin for our chalk and it's going to be so cute. To give our little tea tin a little bit of a galvanized look, you can see a little bit of some silvery shimmer in there. I base coated it in the color Silver Lining by Waverly. So after I let my base coat dry, then I went in with two different colors of the gray paint to give it more of a realistic metal look. The first one is Steel, and it's a Waverly chalk paint. And then this is a metallic shimmering silver by Deco Art, and this is an acrylic paint. I took my chalk paint and I just dipped a little bit out into the lid and then onto my tile here. And you're just gonna go in nice dabbing motions, dabbing that on in all directions and just random looking strokes. And you're not looking for full coverage. You can see some of the other gray is peeking out underneath there. I'm gonna let that dry and go to the other side. Same thing. Then I'll go back in with the acrylic paint, the silver paint, and I am blotting that all over the surface. And it gives us that nice little shimmer, just like galvanized metal. And now I'll let this dry and attach this to our chalkboard to hold our chalk. I've attached our little chalk holder here at the bottom using hot glue and E6000. Now there's only one more thing that we need to do before we can use it, and that is to season it. And what we're going to do is take a piece of chalk and rub it all over the entire surface and then we will be able to prevent what is called ghosting. If I were to just take this board and write on it like it is, if I erased it, that image would still be there. You could see a hazy outline. And so we don't want that. What you want to do is take a piece of chalk. I go outside, or you could also use sandpaper, and I take and rub the edges and all over just to blunt everything down so it's not sharp. We're just going to take our chalk and rub it all over and up, down, and all around just to get chalk all in those surfaces. Now that we have that all coated with the chalk, you're going to take your hand, this is good chalky fun, and you're just going to rub that chalk all into all the crevices. And we're gonna leave it there for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna come back with a rag. So now let me go get all of our items staged up so you can see how awesome everything turned out.
I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you'll try some of these projects. Thank you so much for spending a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate it. Please like this video and also subscribe for more kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Until next week, my friend, be blessed.